you know, we're the best show in town right now because uh, real estate's getting a lot of attention. Not our, not our podcast, uh, but <laughs> real estate in general. I was like, we're shooting, we're shooting for the moon here, buddy. Let's shoot for the stars. Everybody, this is the R&B Real Estate Show. Andrew Roach and I'm Ross Bridges. We are here helping you find your way home. Coming to you all the way from Milton. Andrew, uh, thank you for being patient with me. Today, yeah. <laughs> I was uh, trying to rent out the basement of my house. And I'm uh, Ross Bridges, currently in Burlington, Ontario. Uh, Andrew, pleasure to be talking with you as always. Absolutely. We're, it's a lot of fun doing these shows. Uh, we got to keep them going. Um, you know, always having these kind of one off, off cuff, off the cuff conversations that, you know, um, it's those little nuggets of, of gold that I think we all we both want to share with uh, with our listeners and the, and the general public. Um, help them, you know, again navigate the real estate world as it changes. And one of our topics today that we wanted to talk about was: is the real estate market changing? Right, we're seeing we are seeing changes, um, you know, and it almost seems to be week by week. But is this going to be? A long-term change, or is it a you know the 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 phrase that I've been using with my clients right now is you know is, is the real estate market taking a breath? Is it just <laughs> hang on a second, right? Let's just see what's happening, or is this uh, okay? You know we've got we've uh, we're having supply come on the market, and uh, now buyers have choice, right? So uh, I shared with you some of the things that I've been seeing, Ross. Um, what do you what are you seeing? You know down in Burlington. Yeah, well, I'm just going to, before I get to that, I'm going to just go off on a couple of things. For a lot of the times, consumers will be looking, when is the best time to buy? You know, and we can't really necessarily say unless we look back at data for, you know, over three months, I would say six months to say, oh, this is a lower point in the market. Right. But, you know, if you take that time to do that, home prices could have gone up 8% and then come down 2%. So you're still at plus 6% with the market going up. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of consumers out there. I have 100% seen a softening in the market and I've noticed it over the last 10 days. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny that a lot of people out there, they're looking over, over the last month or two, we're seeing it on it on a daily perspective. Like when you and I have conversations, not only with each other, but also other realtors out there on a regular basis. Uh, attention on showing uh, how many offers. I mean, even before you and I got on this call, and I would love for you to elaborate that in terms of how many people are actually out there, right? Uh, I think we're going to see a slight inventory spike. I know we're going to see a slight inventory spike over the next month or two. Um, are we, heaven forbid, entering into a balanced market condition for the first time in, uh, in a long time? Um, so, uh, I think like we've also heard the expression buyer burnout, right? Uh, media getting on top of things and saying, uh, you know, maybe the uh, markets have heated up a little too fast and it's not sustainable. These are all things that we have heard, uh, even if it's just a murmur, those murmurs uh, can get, we hear them on the news, you see them on the internet and uh, people like you and I hear them all the time. Yeah, and and you know we got we got to take you know the news uh, with a, a grain of salt, um, keeping in mind, of course, that every every news station out there, whether whatever the medium is, is um, you know they're looking for clicks, they're looking for views, they're looking for eyeballs, they're looking for ears, and that's their advertising dollars, right? So you're gonna have the whole like this is gonna sound sensational. Uh, I'm going to post this and d depending on how valid it is. Okay. Just like I said, take it with a grain of salt. Right. But you know, we're hearing, hear a lot of bubble talk, a lot, a lot of bubble talk. We've been hearing that for years, decades, almost really right. Pretty much since the, since the 2008, when the U S went through, through their, uh, um, their bubble bursting, uh, yeah. completely different real estate markets, completely different financial systems, et cetera. So it's not apples to apples by any stretch of the imagination. However, you, one cannot, you know, turn a blind eye to the fact that real estate prices in Canada across the country um, have gone skyrocketing this year, right? And you talk about, you know, are we going to reach and go into a, a balanced market? Well, what's the definition of a balanced market? Um, we lumber would inventory. lumber inventory. We would generally say staying that on the market, home staying on the market for an extended period of time. Yeah. So, but where, where is that? Where, where's the fine line between a seller's market, which we're in now and a buyer's market, which, you know, 
well, let's look at like, BC, uh, sorry, uh, Alberta has been in a buyer's market for a long time. They are now out of their buyer's market and very much in more of a balanced market. And in some areas are actually seeing multiple offer situations, right? Um, so, you know, it's, ar it's arguable, but that might be around three months of inventory and around the GTA, GTHA, whatever, right? Southern Ontario. Um, and we're not anywhere close to that right now. However, uh, it doesn't take long, right? Like you said, months of inventory or sorry, a supply coming on the market, right? So uh, going back to like, you know, the, the news um, headlines, et cetera, you know, we take it right with a grain of salt. However, there's something to be said about in an overheated market, bubble talk, putting a little bit of fear into people, right? You're going to get a lot of the buyers out there that were just blowing each other out of the water um whether it's speculation or you know that the old fomo right the fear of missing out like i better buy a house now or else um and, and that and that was real that was real right so all this you know all this bubble talk it's not a bad it's not it's not necessarily bad whether it's whether it's accurate or not whether we actually are in a bubble or not it's not a bad idea to just cool the jets a little bit take some of the wind out of the sail um you know, and maybe, you know, take some of the buyers off the, off the market and let, let it kind of settle. And we may or may not be seeing that, whether from, like you said, buyer fatigue, um, the natural supply cycle, right? As you know, spring comes around and more, more houses come on the market. That's just, that's just the, the real estate cycle every year, almost without fail, right? Maybe. I think the big thing that you and I need to r remind ourselves too of is, is sustainability, right? Um, we, for our, our, we, we're in an, a booming economy right now. Okay. There is no talk of a recession. We have seen two corrections since April of 2017. One of them was caused by a government correction where they put in new rules and enforce them as we've discussed on shows prior. And then and, we, and we don't always agree on, <laughs> <laughs> but we've seen that the prices technically come down or things come to a halt twice. And they were both done for sustainability of the markets. Okay. So okay. again, my opinion. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I know. I think I just, we, we talked about that before, right? It just maybe not just one catalyst, not just one thing that turned it, right? We obviously, we go back to 2017 and we saw months of inventory come up. We saw supply come on the market naturally, right? And maybe that was just the pin you know, that, that, that burst it. But anyways, I'll give it back to you because I'm going to just keep taking over. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we both are allowed to have strong opinions. Um, I don't mind the media stepping in and, and, and saying that this is not sustainable. I mean, it's not, uh, it's for, not. for prices to go up, uh, 25, 30% a year. That's mm -hmm. not sustainable for the government to step in there and try and do something. Okay. Well, good on them. That was good for our economy long-term, uh, you know, short-term pain for long-term gain. We need sustainability in our economy. We need to ensure that we're looking out for those people entering the market. And if they don't have an opportunity, like you and I talk about 10 million millennials entering into the real estate market. Right. Well, if we haven't had these opportunities, then it, where would prices be today, right? We might've right. might created a, a real estate recession. Right. So uh, the government needs to step in, wag the dog. There's, there's a reason that all of these uh, powers uh, can go out there and, and, and make a statement. The problem is for the consumers is to, us as realtors, we're not trusted. We're like, oh, those realtors can't be trusted. They're not looking out for your best interest. But a lot of the times we see these trends, and this is why we're doing this show, is to educate our clients on right now is an amazing opportunity to, to buy. I anticipate there will be a second strong wave where real estate prices will start to climb. And right now we're going to see what should very well be a normal spring market, a market where you're actually going to have the op opportunity to go out there, look at a lot of homes. And even though it's going to be more of a seller's market, you and I both know that, then it's going to be a, a balanced market. I mean, yeah, you might not be able to buy a home with a home inspection, but at least you're not going to be getting into crazy bidding wars where there's 12 other offers. Maybe you're going to be buying a home like you and I have seen recently where there's there's one or two offers. Like, heaven forbid you get to do a home inspection or put a financing clause in. And that's a conversation with another story is with, with financing clause and appraisals right now. But um, 
no, I like where this is going. I think it's important that we speak from the heart in terms of uh, where the market is going for to protect our clients going forward. Yeah, and so um, touching on maybe two things, and hopefully I don't forget them. Uh, you know, you you did you did say you are we're in a, a booming economy right now, and and yeah, you know, that's that's. Uh, I, said our, I said our economy is pretty pretty strong right now. It is if you compare it to the rest of the world. Yeah. I was, okay. So and that, and so there we go. We that was something else we were talking about. It's all relevance, right? What are you comparing it to, right? Yeah. Um, well, are we talking like oh we're in lockdown now because we're a pandemic? We're in a pandemic, so our economy is not strong. Because if you're looking from it from a global perspective, I can honestly tell you I don't think the GTA has ever been stronger. Yeah, okay. So now we're gonna we're probably gonna be getting outside of our professional hats, <laughs> right? Uh, but. Uh, you know, I guess I think a lot of a lot of what we're the the economic growth that we are seeing is is government funding, right? It's printing it's printing money. Uh, it's uh, they're they're trying to create uh, a degree of inflation, right? Which you know the economically the the biggest nightmare for any economy is deflation, right? So at all turns, you you want to avoid deflation, um, and in fact, you want a night a nice steady inflation means that I can I can borrow money today uh, from anybody right and then I can pay it back cheaper later on right and that's kind of the idea of, of economics very very broadly and any any economist or someone that has like much more experience is probably going to be cringing listening to, to this but uh, all, all that aside um, a big sector one of the one of the biggest things that is contributing to our GDP right now is the housing market. Right, and I think I can't remember the stat, and forgive me, but like it was, it was sizable. It was like forty percent of our GDP, or something like that, of our economy, economic growth was coming from the housing market. Right, so I don't think there's any wonder why, um, you know, we don't have government officials stepping in and trying to trying to you know cool this off really quickly because this is where their growth is coming from. It's coming from the housing market, and if if you if if in a struggling economy, and so I, I I differ slightly, and I know you're talking relatively speaking, and and you're right. I suppose there's some truth to that, but in, in you know it's it's not nice, healthy uh, economic growth. <clears throat> it's uh, stimulated economic growth, and if mo most of that growth is coming from the housing market, um, you know, last thing you'd want to do is, is cut yourself off at the knees. Uh, when you're trying to kind of like you are trying to stir the economy naturally, right? You're trying to get it up and running. You're making investment cheap. You're hoping governments or uh, sorry companies are going to borrow that money, reinvest in their companies, hire more people, which creates tax dollars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, and yeah, pretty pretty darn hard to do that when we keep jumping into uh, lockdowns all the time, right? Yeah. You uh, and here's here's the other thing. You had said something else that I wanted to touch on, um, and oh, it was probably I'm gonna yeah jumping around a little bit here. I apologize, but it, I think it was we were talking about you know what we're seeing boots on the ground, right? Um, you're talking about um, doing doing conditions again, right? Having a home inspection, uh, having um, putting putting financing clause in there, and and that's happening. And so again, take it with a grain of salt. I was uh, I was uh, had a client uh, on two townhouses recently. So just basically, it was Monday and Wednesday was offer nights. We offered on Monday, didn't get it. Offered on Wednesday, didn't get it. But you might think we well, didn't get it because you got outbid. We didn't get it because because neither of us, uh, um, you know, got it. Right? Yeah. Um, so the sellers were expecting um, prices from two three weeks ago. They were expecting the 775, and I know that we came in at 745, and then and then we bumped it up a couple of grand, right? And then, uh, but but the other party was apparently, according to the agent, both agents were close, so the sellers were expecting 775. But listen, I apologize, sellers, uh, that 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 ship has sailed, right? Um, for you're yeah. for, for now, right? I mean, but I mean, what. Uh, that'll get into another another discussion. So hold hold on, <laughs> hold on to that for a second. I still want to go back to economy talk before we get in here, but that's okay. That's okay, right. let me just finish this. Let me just finish this one point about about. Anyways, what I was going to say is, um, I know that the second offer that we had that we did on Wednesday, uh, 
again, according to the agent, and again, take it with a grain of salt, but according to them, uh, the other offer was much higher than ours, but had full conditions, right? So we were in at 748, and then they were in much higher. So what do I assume? Or do I assume 760, but with conditions? Right, 760, 765, who knows? So, who knows? People, so people are trying conditions again, and I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility of getting them done, even if it's shortened. Right. What if I do a one day home inspection? What if you give me three days for financing instead of the full five and five? As right? long as that's realistic and you're not having to ask for an, an amendment for, for an extended period of time. Yeah, but that's that and happens anyways. Like that would happen in a normal market. Could you, could you have pushed for a sign back in those situations or were your clients not prepared to go any They gave us a sign back, but they gave us a sign back for what they wanted. And, and my clients had a hard ceiling. Like you can you can ask, yeah. you can't squeeze, you can't squeeze the blood from a stone, right? Like I want, he could, they signed back at 755. Um. My client had a hard stop at 750, but wasn't comfortable going there firm. Well, we're, we're also going to see issues more and more in the coming weeks and months with the bank appraisals coming back. And there's going to be a differential upon what people have bought for uh, in terms of what the banks are going to actually allow from an appraisal standpoint. Um, yeah. Before we continue on that, I want to apologize to economists as well, too, because, you know, at the end of the day, that is not my job. Like, Household debt is probably much higher right now. Um, you know, where I'm coming from is we're, we're going to have a huge influence of foreign investors coming in from other parts of the world uh, as soon as the borders open up. I think that like, like we're going through a third wave right now of uh, a pandemic, I think we're going to see a second wave of our real estate market boom in the second half of the year. So I think right now, uh, you know, uh, we're all a little burned out. I don't know about you, but I was out with buyers freaking like uh, most days for the better part of a month and a bit, uh, mm -hmm. all through February into March. Um, the small businesses, I want to apologize to you guys because there's no one I feel uh, feel uh, worse for than, uh, you know, the restaurant owners out there, those small businesses that keep our uh, economy booming, uh, the mm -hmm. local support. So, uh, you know, uh, part of the show is to reach out and let you know, like, uh, you know, it's a uh, we're two thirds done this damn pandemic, everybody. We're two thirds done. We were on the uh, the home uh, home stretch here, and uh, hopefully, An and Andrew and I can give you a little bit of entertainment. Um, you know, we're the best show in town right now because uh, real estate's getting a lot of attention. Not our not our podcast, uh, but <laughs> real estate in general. I was like, we're shooting we're shooting for the moon here, buddy. Let's shoot for the stars. I'm, I'm I'm humble by nature, so I'm talking about <laughs> I'm talking about real estate because uh, you know we're still deemed essential service. I don't know how, but we are. Um, and at the end of the day, it is keeping the economy going. Uh, as Andrew did uh, say earlier, like a lot of a lot of our money is going back into uh, into real estate. So um, you know that's where I see us having such a strong economy is the demand in the GTA, uh, the demand from De uh, Niagara Falls, the demand across Canada, everywhere, Ontario, everywhere, right? It's it's everywhere. The demand everywhere. Um, so you know, I I wanted to just give a little bit of reasoning for why I think that we have such a strong um, economy and we will, I think for, I'm confident we will for many years to come. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything else to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can going to try, but I'm like, I got to, I'm liking where our show's going. We're having some fun here. Okay. So let's, let's talk about uh, wrap back around again a little bit. Let's talk again about what we're seeing right now. Um, we were kind of chatting about a little bit of stats beforehand. Yeah. Right. Uh, pulling up kind of like active listings. Uh, when we compare the active listings in March that we just saw, like, so we're, we're, we're basically moments out of March, 2020 here. Uh, we go back and look at March previous, previous years. And we're about a hundred new, a hundred listings more on the market than uh, the past, say three or four years. Right. Um, in fact, we're basically in, at the end of March uh, at the same numbers that we would have seen in April of previous years, right? Well, let me ask you a question, Andrew, because you, you study your data pretty well. And one of the things I was really impressed about what you were telling me when we had a conversation earlier is you were, you were comparing this to 2017, right? Yeah. And I mean, yeah, okay. So there's a huge difference between 2017 where we had a correction on April 21st and now, 
but in terms of seeing inventory like maybe people have missed the boat maybe that that beautiful early spring or the, the pre-spring market that you and i were referring to it as have we is that the end of the pre-spring market are people kind of stopping and trying to figure out what's going on and with everything we've talked about you know there there is a, there's some uncertainty but there's also there's i think there's good deals to be had right now if there's people that aren't going to have to worry about going 200,000 over to win a home yeah i, I think that there's um and i i don't know again sorry to be nitpicking here but like uh cl- classify a or qualify a good deal right in and like <laughs> if if that means that yeah you you're right you don't have to get into a stupid bidding war and just open your checkbook and just write a blank check uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, you don't have to do that right now. How long uh, are you going to be living in your house for? Because you might have, you're, you're like fair market value might be 2023, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Or, uh, or, or it could be, uh, or it could be uh, May of 2021. Don't even get me started on people on agents like telling their clients, "Oh my God!" Like I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that one because that'll be a rabbit hole um, of. Go down it for like a minute because I'm curious to see. I just want to get you started on that. No, don't do it. we'll wrap back around later. It will be never ending. Okay, let's finish this. Okay. Um, okay, so one question that I have though is with this new lockdown, is this is this gonna be lockdown fatigue or people are gonna be like, eh, another lockdown? Like there's no fear left. No, because right? we're, we're in outing for a family right now. Let's go out and look at some homes and we gotta be safe, but yeah, so so you know the the new scare is the variant, right? The yeah. COVID nineteen variants that are coming out. So I guess the question is, and I don't know the answer. In fairness, the question is, will will um, this lockdown and the scare of the variant prevent you know would be sellers from coming on the market? Which would then then if we're seeing an increase in supply right now. Because whether that's um, two things, right? That could be number one. That could just be the natural cycle of like, okay, I was supposed to list my house in March and I was planning on listing my house in March last June. So now it's March, I'm listing my home. Or was that, well, I bought a house in February. So now I have to list my house in March, right? Why was all this supply coming on the market, right? And um, if, if that supply is now on the market and we were expecting to have that the the April supply come to the market, will this lockdown kind of like sh- you know shrink that supply again? Yet we already know that buyers are comfortable kind of going out and about. They're there still. We still see buyers out there. We're still seeing showings booked. It's not like you're not getting any showings, right? We had a we had a house on the market. Um just I guess. A few days we sold it a few days ago but anyways had 27 showings on it right over three days yeah right it's still that's still a healthy number of showings so we know the buyers are out there and i know that i'm working with a handful of them right just j- running all over them yeah right yeah. you know within a lot of days or the last <clears throat> couple of weeks right but i also know that we're starting to you know, with, with, our, with my buyers that have a hard ceiling, not everybody has a big, massive, healthy budget, right? Mm-hmm. So someone that has a, a conservative budget, um, you know, I'm, we're finding houses again, right? This is our, this is our budget. I'm going to go in with this offer. Can you go any higher? Unfortunately not. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's crazy to think in this, this, you know, unprecedented time right now, like you talk about the fear of missing out. There's also the, the, the fear of the unknown, right? We have to be we have to be safer now than than ever, right? We're we're almost done this. I mean, yeah, okay, COVID versus influenza. There's always going to be slight variances of strains that we're probably going to be facing for many many years. Um, you know, I have we gone through the worst of it? I, I hope so. I really really do. Um, but yeah, we we this is basically going back to a very you know generalized statement what i'm going to say right now is like we're looking at it through socialist eyes and capitalist eyes there's the people out there right now going oh, i got to get a house because prices just keep climbing and climbing and climbing and we have to do what's right for our society right now too right um so i think it's great that we are being smart enough to um to be in lockdown i know a lot of people out there that think it's stupid and oh, yeah. we're, doing, we're we're doing what the most horrible thing for our economy right now and i feel horrible for those small businesses out there 
and the stress and the mental illness and all of the stuff that people are going through right now because they can't pay their bills. Yeah. So we're in such a tough situation right now that it's just like, what are we going to do? Right? Like it's, uh, it's really, really tough. And like you just said, there's going to be people that are still going out to buy homes prices. Like there's still a demand and, uh, and people, maybe they're wanting to move out of the city closer to where we are. Right. And there's people wanting to move They're They're considering Milton Burlington, the city, and they're moving the heck out of town. Right. So, um, we're, we're seeing some stuff right now that, uh, unprecedented. Yeah. And, and I, surprisingly, I was chatting with a colleague downtown Toronto works like beaches and Leslieville and all that kind of stuff, which is a very sought after area as it is. Right. Um, but she's like, we're still multiple offers like crazy things going crazy over lists. Right. And which was, which was somewhat surprising for me yet. I also tried to justify it. I tried to like, I shouldn't say justify it, rationalize it. Um, you know, it was that like, you know, the exodus, everyone like just ran out for COVID and then it's like, okay, hey, look at all the deals in Toronto. There's no, you know, and then everybody's coming back. Okay, it's not so bad. And so I asked her about that. And she's like, no, it's been pretty, pretty solid, pretty, pretty steady. So, um, uh, you know, I don't know. I think it's just, I mean, there's so many reasons why the, the real estate market has, has gone crazy. And, and we've talked about them uh, on other shows, but, you know, um, coronavirus, getting out, not having to live downtown, not having to have to commute anymore, or as much, I should say, uh, and then especially rock bottom interest rates. And then the Bank of Canada is coming out saying interest rates are going to be rock bottom until at least 2023, which then further gives buyers confidence to say, okay, so they're not going up anytime soon. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to buy what I can. And I'll keep it as a variable rate right now because yeah. that variable rate's a little bit more advantageous than totally. a fixed rate right now. Right. The U.S. and the U.S., the, the interest rates are going up, right? The Canada, our interest rates went up a bit just because of the bond yield. Um, but but that variable rate, uh, if you can grab it, I mean, it's it's uh, it's pretty appealing. Yeah. Right. And uh, for all of you people thinking of buying in the next three, four months, uh, get those rates locked in. Right. Uh, we can put you in contact with a, a great mortgage specialist. If that's what you want to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like the very, I'm a, I'm a variable guy when I can. I mean, I guess if, if you can lock it in, like there was uh, I mean, you, you could get like a, was a 1.9% or something like that. 1.7% five-year fixed. I mean, that's pretty darn appeal, appealing too. Right. Um, Educate me for a second. So sorry. When, when you're talking to the banks and you're like, oh, you lock me in for that next three, four months, 90 to 120 days is what that's uh, on a fixed rate could that not still be a variable rate oh I, I i apologize i took the lock it in as you're in a variable now switch me over to a fix to lock oh, in the okay. rate yeah i apologize um i hear what you're saying misunderstanding no well you you know you i mean you, you have a background as a mortgage broker i know my background's that construction and marketing over here so well, well there you go i mean two very uh, applicable trades if you will to have for real estate Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, you're again, another thing you were chatting about here, and I'm going to go back to the stats because I just kind of like, I like that. I like to, I like to justify things, right? And, uh, theories that I've seen, right? Um, the, the, the March data isn't out yet officially. Uh, it probably won't be out for about a, about a week or so. Hopefully we'll get it like mid next week. Um, so I kind of did, I pulled the rough data here basically, but um, you know, uh, year over year, March was up 22%. This is going to be Milton. I apologize for leaving you out here a little bit there. Um, month over month, or sorry, year over year, 22%, right? Which is still significantly high. It's not the, uh, what was it? 20... 5%, I think it was for January or for March. And uh, no, it was 29% for February and 33% for January. Did I say January twice there? February and January. Um, and then, so uh, actually I wanted to chat, I don't want to chat about this here, but anyways, I want to mention it. This, this is, this is excluding, uh, the, just, just to keep the averages in check, excluding Brian Baumler's house, uh, that just sold for 7.5 million. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We took that guy out, right. Just so we could average it a little closer right the next the next closest i think sold for like 3.3 million right so that was a bit of a significant jump 
to have uh, to have that sale in the averages. So I did I did admittedly uh, leave that out. But even still, looking at the uh, at the median change was still nineteen percent year over year, right? I went up to Milton to show a home. Like my clients had called me on the the Thursday. I was going to go show them the home on the Friday listed for one seven nine. It was underpriced, mind you. Yeah. Uh, sold next morning two point four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, but it was clearly underpriced. And hey, that shows you an example of why you you want to price it a little bit lower to attract that audience for a quick sale too, right? So, well, absolutely. And and you know, I I. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't wait until that's done. Uh, oh, it's it's yeah. um, price accordingly. Cause that yeah. comes back on us as realtors too. Like, Oh, well, why did you realtors price it so low? Why was it not priced accordingly? I know. Yeah. We can, we can argue that we are collecting the lar largest target audience by pricing it lower. You're bringing, you know, 95 plus percent of the people to the table if you price it too high, then you're you're taking out a huge large large audience. We can also talk about how our systems are a giant search engine, right? So a lot of the times our clients will say, "Oh, we're only looking up to 850." Okay, so we price the home at 849 instead of at 855 or 865, then you're going to have a larger target audience from that standpoint as well too. But. Uh, I know yeah. you wanted to continue on, on the, the data talk there. Uh, not, well, I guess uh, not really. I guess I, I was going to just elaborate uh, just one step further just to say that Halton, uh, median change year over year. Uh, so Halton as a whole was 29%. So other areas are getting still that bigger that bigger increase than, uh, than Milton was. Maybe Milton's kind of just plateauing a bit. Um, but you get in this kind of like the smaller uh, priced markets uh, in and around Halton that, um, that would have a big, a bit of a more of a significant jump. We talked about this on another show too, right. About how like they're, they're like in its peak end of January, early February, it didn't seem to be very much of a price discrepancy for distance away from Toronto. Right. Like that really kind of like bucked the trend where you would put Toronto as the epicenter as the most expensive area and then things would just marginally get cheaper the further out you kind of went in whatever direction it didn't really matter right and for a while there i mean like a house in milton was the same price as a house in guelph is the same price as a house as like orangeville is the same price as a house as mississauga right like there wasn't there wasn't <laughs> there wasn't any change really uh for for a while there it was uh it was kind of bananas uh, but it's good to uh, kind of get, you know, um, le level, have this plateau a little bit. Uh, you know, you can't go, you can't increase 30% a year, right? You can't increase 20% a year. Heck, you can't even really arguably increase like 15%. 10 is, 10 is overly healthy, right? And we've talked about this on previous shows, but like, um, you know, segments within the market, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's a condo or a townhome. Um, and then I go back, like I think of specific areas within Oakville and Burlington, and I'm, I'm sure you know the same, obviously, in Milton is, well, you're looking for those trends, those things that set specific neighborhoods apart from other neighborhoods, right? Uh, the schools, obviously, yeah. that's a huge indicator for supply and demand. Uh, and I think of um, so many different cultures out there where all they care about, the most important thing, even more than the home is they care about their, their child's education. And I love that. I think that's so beautiful that they're putting their, the future of their, um, you know, their family ahead of everything else, because that's what they want is their children to get the best education. So to talk about it, such a generalized statement is, um, you know, it's not sustainable. Like we should be seeing prices going up eight to 10%, you know? Yeah. Um, and and that would be, that would be very, up. that'd be very healthy and very sustainable. Right. And yeah. some years, heaven forbid, it goes up 2% and other years it goes up 15. But what we've seen over the last five, six years, and now I could argue from a global perspective that Canada is behind in terms of our evaluation of property. And I can argue that we have a lot of natural resources, water. Sorry, being I'm going to pause you there for a second. What do you mean uh, behind as far as our property, valuation of our property? Well, we, we, we've caught up. We've, 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 we've definitely caught up. But in terms of like, if I go to places like in Australia or, or certain parts of, uh, you know, um, Singapore, Hong Kong, where we are still deemed as one of the 
the like this is where everybody on the planet's wanting to come for opportunity right now. They're looking at Vancouver, they're looking at Ontario, and uh, so there's. I feel that our market evaluation is is still or has been low for years, and now we've caught up. And a lot of the consumers, Canadian consumers, might say, "Oh, well, when's there going to be a correction? When's there going to be a correction?" I don't. I don't see it because the um, the migration there, there's a migration that's going to continue throughout our lifetime where people are going to be coming to Canada. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, I was, I apologize. I was kind of a little bit off, off camera here looking, uh, looking for something I had just seen that, uh, an economist that I follow, yeah. Um, or I shouldn't say an economist, I apologize, an analyst that I follow had posted, he had kind of reposted something on LinkedIn. Uh, long story short on it, it it's covered um, real estate growth from the turn of the century, right? From 2000 till today. Actually, it was until last year. It was until 20, uh, 2020. Um, and the, and it's, it's, it's kind of a... Um, what do you call it? like an animated graphic where the numbers go up and it'll it'll move the country into like first, second, third kind of place, et cetera, right? Yeah. Um, anyways, it was it was it was kind of shocking to find out in comparison to like other major countries around the world how quickly um, how quickly the Canadian market has outpaced other markets as far as um, uh, as far as uh, real estate growth goes, like percentage percentage growth, right? Uh, and I was just going to say about population densification, or is this more in terms of the the, the price, the the evaluation of properties going up? About the value of real estate going up. Okay. So percentage increase, right? Um, and if I if I remember what it was, here it is. You know what? I'm going to see if I can uh, let me share my screen here. It's Don. It's Don Campbell shared uh, James Eagle. Um, and I'm going to share the screen for those that are going to be watching this on, uh, on YouTube awesome, or any other medium here, but, uh, check this out. Whoops. Uh, there we go. So let me see if I can get this started from the beginning. Check this out. Watch Canada. So here we are at the turn of the century here. Um, we're in what, what is this? We're kind of in fifth place. And here we are looking at the UK, Italy, the U S France, Canada, Spain, and Germany, as we open this up, as far as uh, turn of the century growth grows. And apparently I've got music, I'll turn off the music. <laughs> so we've dropped here. We are 2003. We've dropped down to sixth place at 20% increased growth. So with a five-year span, we're up 30%. Now we're jumped up to fourth. So in 2000, here we approach 2008, everything comes down. And then it just goes up from there. Now we're jumped up to second or so, so third party, uh, third uh, place, sorry. So at, in, in 10 years, our real estate market had, had increased by 75%, almost 75%. Now 2020, or sorry, 2012, sorry, 80%, 85%. And then it just takes off. Wow. Thank you for sharing this. This is uh... look at it. Look at it. Just outpace everything else. It just shot up there, right? So 2017, we're up 147 percent, and the next closest was the UK at 93 percent. Unreal. And then yeah. it's gonna and then it's gonna yeah. shoot up again here. I mean, you can argue that proves the migration, and then, like I said, it'll it'll continue throughout our lifetime. Yeah, so here you are ending 20 years later, the end of Q4, right? So that is, and that doesn't even take into consideration this massive spike that we just had over, um, uh, over uh, just, just in 2021 alone, right? So here we are in 20 years, our, our Canadian real estate market is up 168%. And the next closest was the UK at 96%, right? We're up 100% higher. Than the next closest but our population is 38 million and you look about how many people from across the world are coming to coming to canada right i agree and and, and um i think you know that there are there are so many factors at play that are that are playing with the canadian real estate market um 
and and immigration is going to be is is going to be huge on 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 that right it's going to be a big 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 player uh looking globally as to uh around the world looking at other countries i mean dude we are absolutely blessed to live in the greatest country in the world and i know there's some other countries out there that are going to, that are going to you know argue for top spot top spot oh, right canada. but <clears throat> hey oh canada <laughs> Proud um, to be canadian right now aren't we yeah, well, you know what? But at the end of the day, like this is the, this is where people want to be. Yeah, right around the world, right? If you and and I look around and some of the stuff that you see around the world, it's 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 shocking, right? That that is that's that's how uh, their country lives, uh, you know, operates. Um, you know, whether it's just 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 blatant corruption, and yes, there's corruption in Canada. We see it all the time, yeah. and it's and it's yeah. it's painful, but. It's like next level corruption. It's open. It's open and arrogant corruption. Well, we are influenced by the U.S. So let's. <laughs> to all of my American friends out there, I love you. We can take right. jabs. We can j- take jabs at the uh, at the meth lab downstairs. At our, at uh, our big brother. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, like there's there's a lot going for Canada, uh, but there's a lot kind of going against it as far as you know, as far as the real estate market goes and how it's um how it's handled and and the amount of kind of red tape in order to uh for development and the bureaucracy that holds that holds development back and allows more supply to come on the market and all that kind of stuff and you know again you're we're gonna getting into a very broad topic right and there's there's you know when you talk about talk about the green belt around uh around uh, gta and, and out in vancouver they've got something similar out there right where they've, they've got they're protecting the uh the environment i think that's critical i i, I really do um can agree more but you know you got to get into infrastructure right infrastructure to allow people to move around because at the end of the day somebody shouldn't have to drive an hour and a half or have you drive whatever spend a half an hour and a half to get to work each day to and from right we need infrastructure in place and unfortunately those infrastructure projects cost like seven times as much as they would anywhere else and they take about 12 times as long to actually get uh you know green stamped or whatever it's called we might want to save that for another show my friend maybe but that might also be getting out of uh, our our expertise and it's very disopinionated we have to do more research on that or actually you know what better yet have a guest speaker i, I like that I, I also think that that video that you shared was amazing and i'm super thank you very much for uh, sharing that with our audience because that's so cool to see supply and demand just how much everybody wants to be in canada that's that's amazing that's amazing but uh, well I, again other factors other factors at play right but yeah Let's uh, let's wrap it up. <laughs> For all of you watching on the video, that's I totally gave a cue because that I don't even know how long our show's been. But uh, um, I want to thank Andrew Roach so much and his uh, his family business up in Milton. Um, you know, I'm Ross Bridges. We are the RNB Real Estate Show, helping you find your way home. Um, Andrew, thank you always yeah i guess the the conversation was coming to an end so uh no better time than the present to wrap it up anyways always good chatting with you man we'll have uh, we'll have another one uh, out there soon